Today, folks, we continue the electrical work on the Alice. Um, we have uh, done a previous video where we showed the problem I was having with the short, and then I bypassed the amp meter and made another connection, and it did start for me. But as I said, I didn't want to keep using it without an amp meter. So um, what I've done since, a couple things. Uh, I removed the old amp meter, and I'll show you that in just a second. But I also managed to get the LED lights that my son got me for Christmas mounted. Nothing's wired in yet, but I managed to get them mounted. So potentially I will have four lights uh, on this tractor, two front and two rear. The rear ones were fairly easy because holes were already drilled. And as you can see here, this is an old rubber gasket in there. It would, the hole was pre-drilled through these clamshell fenders to run your wire down through. And then essentially they feed in through this rib, which is hollow, and then come down there. You can see there's another uh, hole there to fish them underneath to bring them into towards your switch. In the front it was a little trickier. Um, I did get them both mounted as you can see on either side of the the radiator here in the front um, the original equipment lights here didn't have a bolt like this going through the sheet metal it was actually a hollow threaded pipe and what they would do is or what they did is they had the wire here actually fish through that in so i don't have a second hole here in the outside to get the wire in and I didn't have threaded pipe what came with with the mounting brackets on these were bolts so I'm going to have to drill another hole in the sheet metal uh, possibly to on each side to get them in again as I said I'm not trying to make this tractor original I just make trying to make it functional um, and then um, as long as they have lights I'm happy with it it's not going to be a show tractor it's a work tractor and I'm not devaluating or devaluing it as a work tractor because actually it didn't have lights that worked when I <laughs> when I got it. So should I ever decide to sell it, I'll be able to sell it hopefully with a set of uh, working LED lights, which if somebody else is looking for a working tractor, they would appreciate that. So um, also here, as I had said before, I took out the old amp meter was in here. I'll explain that in just a second. I also removed the old uh, light switch that was no longer working. And I pulled out this little um, uh, socket for the dashboard light just because I didn't need it. I did put the original ignition switch back in because it did work. So I think I'll probably just keep that for now. Um, I'll keep the, the new one I bought just in case as a backup. Um, but if this works, there's no sense changing it out. So at any rate, that's going to be the plan. The first thing I have to do is put the new amp meter in and connect that properly. But let me just show you here some of the stuff I took off. <laughs> um, this is the old amp meter. As you can see, it says Alice Chalmers on it. This is probably the original. Um, but the way it fastens, it slides through the dash there and then it's clamped from the back with this clamp and there's a set of, uh, of uh, studs there, uh, bolts there with um, nuts and washers that hold it in place. <laughs> it was really miserable to get this out because of trying to reach inside the back of the dash to get at it. And what made it even worse is whoever put this in, or when they did rewiring on it, because there are newer wires, they put it together in the wrong sequence. See, with, with this kind of setup, and I, I'm pretty sure I'm right about this. With this kind of setup, you slide the wires over with the connectors over the, um, the bolts first and then you tighten that and you can fish your wires out through the front of the dashboard and you can connect it up that way without any hassle because you're in the open to be able to do that. Then you slide the amp meter gauge into the dash 
and then from the rear you put the bracket on and then you just have two bolts or two nuts that you have to reach up in to tighten, tighten down and hold it in place. What somebody did here is they reversed the sequence. They mounted the bracket with the first set of nuts, tightened it up, and then they put the connectors with the wires on second which meant in order to get it off I actually had to take instead of two nuts off I had to take four off I had to take two off to get the wires off and then I still had two more to go to get the bracket off to get it out so it would have been a whole lot easier if I only had to do two it was so cramped up in there it was hard to get my uh, ratchet and my socket in there at it I was working blind you can't really see what you're doing I was feeling my way through it wasn't even sure what the size was uh, to tell you the truth, I had a few different ones in there till I figured that one was as tight as it was going to be on it, and it was just miserable. This is kind of a dumb design. I think there's a some of the amp meters that I saw online, they've replaced this setup where on the back of the amp meter they actually have two studs there where you connect your wires separately. They still have the bar here. Um, the, you know, the clamp it fast, but there's just one screw there. So you only have one to take off to get it loose to be able to work on it instead of, in my case, four. So that's, uh, I don't have one of those. I still have the four, but if I do it in a proper sequence, I can do two of them with it out, sticking out of the dash where I can get at it to tighten them down easier. And then I only have to fight with two uh, working blinds. So, and this way with the new amp meter, that I got, um, as you can see, it's got the same kind of bolt setup. I can know exactly what size um, socket I need without having to stick it up in there blind. I can choose the right socket first so that I don't have to fight with that. This was a cheaper one. It's a generic one, tractor supply one. The original equipment one for this is like 40 bucks, uh, and it didn't make any sense to me to spend that kind of money if I didn't need it. So. Um, as you can see, I also took the old light switch out and cut it off. Um, and this was the socket for the, oops, the socket for the uh, dashboard light. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Maybe at some point I'll replace that. Here were the tractor actually had three lights on, two in the front, one in the back. Uh, two of these were replacements. Obviously, these are GE bolt GE. Uh, lights. I don't know what era they are, but I think this is an original equipment one. Um, again, you can see it's the threaded pipe with the wire running right through the middle of it. So um, I'm not going to worry about, again, trying to replace this with something original. I'm sure that this is probably 50, 60 bucks for something like this, and there's no point in spending that kind of money. It has a glass housing on it, and it cl the trim clamps around it like a lot of these old tractors had. So, uh, and the amount of light that that threw, or even these threw, wouldn't be anywhere near what the LEDs will put out, the old mounting, or the mounting brackets that came with these. So, all this stuff I've stripped off, and now I'm going to replace it with new. Um, but the first step, of course, is to get my amp meter hooked up again, then i got to figure my scheme from my ignition switch to the new... Uh, to the new light switch um, so that I can have the lights. At this point I'm just going to have one switch to turn on all four. Uh, it would be ideal if I had two switches on the dash, one for front lights and one for rear lights, but since I don't use lights that often it's not necessary. Since I'm not driving on the road at night it's not necessary because obviously you don't want bright lights shining back at the car behind you or what have you. Uh, and there are no tail lights on this tractor of any kind. so. Rather than go to all that trouble, I'll just put it all on one switch, and then if I'm out at night, I'll have light behind me and light in front of me, and no big deal. So uh, we'll keep it simple for now, since I'm not that great of a direct current electrician. So we'll go from there, and um, we'll invite you along for the ride. Hopefully this won't take too long. I'm going to do the amp meter first, make sure that my tractor will start with what I did with that, and then I'll continue on the the rewiring job for the rest of the lights. So we'll see how far we get. Today is a miserable day outside. So it's a good day to be working in the shop. We uh, have this winter storm that's 
we're about in the midst of. We had a few inches of snow this morning and now it's turned to freezing rain which the air temperature is still in the mid 20s so even though I guess the temperatures on high must be warm and that's why it's rain instead of snow but as soon as this hits it's going to form a crust and you know cover the vehicles and stuff with ice and we still have probably from what they were saying a number of hours left of this so who knows what it'll end up being but I'm not going anywhere today it's really not enough snow to have to plow with the with the scraper blade but I still want the tractor to be in shape just in case things should change we're supposed to have 40s and 50s the next few days so what you see here will probably all be gone within 48 hours if the forecast holds but for right now let me just work on the tractor so I'm ready to go we'll be back to you when we get a bit more done okay as you can see the amp meter is in a whole lot easier to put this one in than taking the other one out um, on the back of the amp meter the poles were marked positive and negative they weren't on the old one but fortunately with this diagram that I had downloaded I could tell oops let's get this old for me okay since I'm going from the positive terminal on the battery to the solenoid and then at that same screw on the solenoid is where I connected the other end of the amp meter so I'm bringing that into what I'm believing is the positive side of the amp meter so since it's positive to there to there I'm guessing that's positive so this would be the negative side that comes down over here to the bat uh, connector on the voltage regulator I think I have this wired correctly uh, but we're gonna see we're gonna give the tractor a start and see if it'll if it'll work so here we go let's see what'll happen I haven't run the bat tractor in a while so I don't know how the battery is but let's see what happens well there we go one of just turn over right away let's see I'm gonna leave a little bit of choke here Okay, well at least I know of the wiring sequence properly uh, in place because it did start no problem considering it's cold I'm not unhappy. Now my amp meter gauge didn't move from zero so I'm not sure what that means. Is this not working? Is the system not charging or discharging? I don't know, I've got to do a bit more research but at least I know the wiring is correct the way it's supposed to be maybe it's a case and I still maybe you guys have Alice's could tell me this I know the proper thing to do here to complete this to a 12 volt system is to get rid of the 6 volt generator and get a 12 volt alternator as I said before in my videos I don't have the money to do that right now 
So I, what I don't know is, will the 6-volt generator charge a 12-volt battery, or won't it show up at all? I don't know. Um, at this point, I've got to do more research on that, but at least the tractor starts for me. Hopefully, it'll stay running. I'm guessing that once it's running, it will. Um, so the immediate electrical problem that I was having that I talked about in the last video seems to be fixed now. With the new amp meter in here, I don't have to worry about um, having bypassed that, not a problem. Obviously, it's connected the way it's supposed to be. I don't have my polarities reversed or anything like that. So, I'm not going to stress too much about it at this point. My next move, of course, here is going to be I've got to start to run my uh, wires for my headlights and my tail, or, you know, my rear lights and my front lights. And then I've got to figure out how to get them in from, uh, I think, if I, look, if I remember correctly, it runs from the um, uh, switch to the... Um, the, the ignition switch to the light switch. That takes power to the light switch. Light switch then would, uh, when it's on, will complete the circuit, send power out to all four lights, and they should work. So I've just got to take a look at that a little bit more and see what I need to do with that. I think if I looked at the other diagram properly with this um, direct volt, and again, I'm not an expert on direct volt electricity, that all I have to do is on the, the ground or the negative side is ground the lights to the tractor. Since the battery on the negative side is grounded to the tractor frame, um, that should carry the ground all the way through the tractor, so that should complete the circuit, I believe. So we'll see what happens, but um, for right now, the amp meter is in and the tractor starts. So two hurdles <laughs> solved. I gotta work on the rest of the wiring. Alright, thank you for watching.